you might be surprised by the amazing, relaxing, and sometimes weird things you can do on a Disney cruise. So I'm here to show you 20 must-dos on the Disney Cruise Line. Let's get going! We have boarded the Disney Dream from Port Miami and we are still in port as boarding is still ongoing. Right when you enter a Disney cruise, they do call out your name and announce your arrival, which is super fun. The lobby right now is Halloween themed, which was amazing as well. There's a giant spooky tree. Who doesn't love a spooky tree? Um, and then we proceeded immediately to our muster stations for our safety drill. This is actually the true only must do on a Disney cruise is going to those muster stations and getting that safety drill. So we headed over there and learned what to do in case of emergency, but now, We've got a bit of time while people board, so we are heading to the buffet that is currently being offered because I'm hungry. And I say we because I'm not here alone. I'm here with Cassie from Disney Food Blog. <laughs> and I've lost her immediately to the unlimited soft serve. I'm making you a cup. You want swirl? Yes. This, this is a group effort that I'm not sure should be occurring. That's perfect. That's beautiful. Oh yeah, let's walk this baby to the funnel. Now as we wait for our very first must-do of the cruise, I'm gonna check out Cabanas, which is the buffet offering here. They do serve uh, lunch, dinner, and breakfast at the spot with lots of different stations. Um, all you can enjoy, of course, um, and like most things on the cruise, the food is included in the all-inclusive fee. My plate of food from the Sail Away Buffet looks amazing and various, but that's what I get to do at a buffet. And I rhyme now, also. Alright, I'm going to chow down now, but keep in mind, if you want full reviews of every single thing that I eat on this cruise, keep an eye on the channel. There is um, a video coming out where I'll take you with me for reviews of every single thing I eat. But uh, eating is a must-do. Though it's not one of the specific musties on our list. Although it kind of is. Uh, you'll see. You'll see. Alright, we experienced the Sail Away Buffet. The ship is definitely starting to fill up with more people. And uh, I'm headed for a pit stop before we make it to our very first must-do. Alright, our first must-do is going to be to check out the view from your room. Whether that view is real or not. We have a veranda stateroom. We were invited on this cruise by Disney, so thank you, Disney, for having us. If you've never cruised before, you'll notice it's all on the small side. There's a queen-size bed in here, um, and that is also a sofa bed over there. There's a divider for the room if you would like it divided. And this is actually a pull-down, so it becomes something of a bunk bed. Um, we do have a veranda, which is relatively spacious. Some two very nice chairs out there, a little table. And right now our view is not too great because our view is of Port Miami, but I'm sure it will be spectacular later, so that's pretty exciting. Other room categories include inside staterooms, ocean view staterooms, family staterooms, some of those with verandas like ours, um, and then concierge level and suites as well. And depending on the room type you have, your view might be a little different. Any room with a window or a veranda just has a view of the actual outside, whereas the inside staterooms, those rooms have something a little different with virtual portholes that show views of the real time outside on a screen and maybe some Disney characters will pop in to visit every once in a while. So it's a very cool amenity here on the Disney Cruise Line that you have those virtual portholes. So maybe it doesn't feel like you're on an inside inside stateroom with those cheaper rooms. Do a quick check out of the bathroom. Pretty small, of course. It's got the commode room here with the sink but um, not the smallest ever. Um, it looks about the same size as The Wish, which is Disney's newest and largest cruise ship. And then here is a very nice shower room with a bathtub. Wow, I would not fit in that bathtub. Maybe Cassie would. And then um, lots of H2O products and me going like this. <gasps> Stop, are you serious? Is this a makeup mirror that's just, <gasps> what? You guys, that's crazy. Okay, that's the room. Had a little bit of relaxation time, and now it's time to head to our next must-do. This is a drum roll, but silent and with my hands. Thank you, Cassie. What are you around for? 
But I wasn't gonna reveal it right now. <laughs> but I'm not, not here to cover anything for Disney Food Blog. I'm just here to give you just here. <laughs> some drum roll. She's not doing anything Disney Food Blog work. She's just um, some my agent. sound effects. She's my Foley artist. <laughs> Hello, Sail Away Show. The Sail Away Show happens on every cruise. It happens today at 4.30 on the Disney Dream for us to sail away from Port Miami. And it's a big celebration of the start of the cruise with a lot of your favorite Disney characters and very cool choreography. Typically, it happens on the main pool deck, so that would be deck 11 on this ship. But because we have some inclement weather coming in, they went ahead and moved it down to the atrium. It was tricky because it was hard to tell if they were going to do it on deck 11 or if they were going to do it in the atrium. So we were in deck 11 until like moments before it started and then the cruise director got on the speaker for the whole ship and said that it was going to be in the atrium and I booked it down the stairs to get a good spot and I still made it but I did run down a lot of flights of stairs but it's a must do you gotta do what you must for a must do we're headed to see a live show that is our next must do the Walt Disney Theater is the main stage theater here on the Disney Wish. There are Broadway style live shows at this theater each night of your cruise in most instances. Um, tonight is the Golden Mickeys, which is a very special show that is specific to Disney Cruise Line um, that is kind of like an award ceremony. Now we can't film during the show unfortunately. Um, it is absolutely amazing and I highly recommend it. I went to see the Golden Mickeys when I was um, nine years old on the Disney Cruise and it is still one of my favorite memories. So. Um, I've got some nice uh, mezzanine seating, and uh, you can sit wherever you like. It's open seating for everyone, and we're gonna go ahead and see, I think, a pretty amazing show. All right, we just watched the Golden Mickeys. Both of us, as, at different times, looked Multiple at each other times. and just had tears in our eyes. It was such a good show, hands down better than any show you can see in Disney World at any of the parks. I think it's really exciting how they showcase more unique characters you don't always get to yeah, see. Yeah, like there was a, I freaked out because there was a Hunchback of Notre Dame scene and I wasn't expecting it and that's one of my favorite movies. There's a Lady Tarzan the scene, Tramp. Lady and the Tramp is like, it's really cool and the kind of like stunts and talent that they're doing on stage. Oh, Tarzan. Like uh, he, doing aerial stunts, unbelievable. Absolutely a must do is seeing a live entertainment on your Disney cruise. Here on the Disney Dream, there's um, the Golden Mickeys like we saw. Uh, they're also doing on this three night sailing, Beauty and the Beast, and then Disney Believe, which is another of those Disney Cruise Line exclusive shows. I honestly kind of want to see them every night, so we'll see if we can make that happen. We're talking about it again and crying. Like, <laughs> it was a story of self-confidence. <laughs> As you may have noticed, this cruise is the Halloween time on the high seas cruise, as you can tell from the decorations. And I think that this spooky tree is about to do something extra spooky for us. We'll have to find out. Some Disney cruise itineraries will have a theme like Halloween time on the high seas, Christmas time on the high seas. There are Marvel cruises, Star Wars themed cruises. So just check that out when you're booking. It's all in like the booking information. It's definitely a plus to the cruise, but even a Disney cruise without a seasonal or special celebration has Pirate Night, which we will certainly check out. Spoiler alert on one of the must do's. Uh, but we've got Halloween. Bring the power of nightmare unseen. Bring them to life. It's Halloween. to a segment that will be edited out entitled Where's Quincy? In which somehow I've ended up with Quincy's camera and she has ended up with my key to the world card. Everyone wants to know, where is Quincy? We're gonna find out. One thing I will say about those lobby atrium shows or the stay party, those deck parties, is that they do crowd up very fast. If you want a really good view, you're definitely gonna wanna show up early. Where is Quincy? We found her, everyone. Back to your rightful person. Regularly first. scheduled programming. <laughs> All right, next up on our list of must do's is to eat up at your rotational dining experience. So, the way Disney Cruise Line does your dinners is with rotational dining, which means you will rotate through the ship's feature restaurants over the course of each evening. Tonight, we are dining at Enchanted Garden. 
and they actually just opened up the doors for us. Um, again, you can get a full review of this spot and everything else I eat in the food video that's coming soon to the channel. These are the spectacularly themed restaurants on Disney Cruise Line. On this ship, it is Enchanted Garden, Royal Palace, and my favorite, Animator's Palette, which takes you through a dinner show through the history of animation. Enchanted Garden, more of an Enchanted Garden vibe, as you can probably guess, and it does have a different vibe from morning to night as the lighting in the restaurant changes. It's pretty neat. Now I'm supposed to meet Cassie back at the room and we're gonna change into some comfy clothes, but I really wanna become a detective. So the Disney cruise ships do have these interactive games on them. The Wish had one that wasn't quite ready when we were on the ship. But here on the Dream, there's the Midship Detective Agency, where you can become a detective and solve a mystery. Now Welcome this is, to the oh my gosh, it's talking to me. Agency. Which case would you like to solve? Oh my gosh. Please choose one now. Muppets. Well, this is coming along perfectly. I got rid Mickey. of the desk. Hey, Mickey, where are you? Sage will be so okay, jealous right now. He loves Pug of the Prawn. Well, well, uh, Milky Mouse is out to lunch, okay? Okay. I don't mean to disrespect you. We need your help to find our missing props, or we won't be able to put on our show. You're going to have to search all over the ship. Find this painting on your map. We'll meet you there. All right, so now in addition to being a regular crew guy, and also your host, I'm a detective solving a Muppet crime. Um, give you one guess, which is my favorite out of those three titles. It's being your host. And the second best is being a Muppet detective. And let's talk a little bit about our another must do and a very, very big one is to download the Disney Cruise Line app. This is the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. And instead of getting a paper navigator at your door like you did 10 years ago on a cruise, you now have it all in your phone on an app. And it's connected to the complimentary limited Wi-Fi that allows you to access the app and nothing else. This app is super, super helpful. It's where you will see all of the events happening for the day, your own dining and reservations, any like port adventures will be listed, any upcharge charges on the ship, like any cocktail tastings will be listed, plus where you're dining each night and what your table number is, all of it is in the app. On top of that, you can go ahead and use the app to book new stuff, you can use the app to purchase better Wi-Fi if you'd like, or complete Wi-Fi, see when the characters are meeting, um, explore the deck plans, everything that you could possibly need to know about the ship is located in that app. So definitely, definitely a must do is download that. I recommend downloading it in advance and getting familiar with it, um, but it won't be fully opened up until you can get on that ship Wi-Fi. So one of the most unique things about Disney Cruise Line compared to other cruise lines is they do offer Disney characters on board and there are tons of Disney character meet and greets available during your like voyage. Um, even right now, it is 1054 at night and right now, oh there goes Captain Minnie, heading out for the night, <laughs> hugging and then Rapunzel is in here meeting guests as well. And since this is Halloween time on the high seas, there is an extra special meet and greet that I'm going to go hop in line for very early. It starts at 11.15 um, and Cassie and I have been in line for it for about um, almost 30 minutes now already. And the line's very long. And maybe you can guess who it is and maybe you'll have to wait and see. Regardless, character meet and greets are absolutely a must do on the Disney cruise. I specifically remember meeting Captain Hook when I came as a kid. I loved getting to meet Captain Mickey and Captain Minnie on the Disney Wish. And I'm super excited to see what characters we'll get to meet during our trip this time. You can find when characters meet in that Disney Cruise Line app in your navigator. And I'll just warn you to maybe line up a little early, especially for those more popular characters, just to make sure that you do get to meet them. Hello. Hello. Happy, Happy Halloween. I am frightened. You yeah, you're the pumpkin started. king. Oh. You're very frightening. It is worth Sally. <laughs> <laughs> every, uh, every time of, of year. Do uh, more, Jack. Do more. <laughs> hmm. Have you got any plans for us for Halloween? Oh, I mean, trick or treating, trick of course. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, you think I'll start a good bring to Halloween time, maybe? Fleeing from ghouls. Oh, very yeah. good for good Halloween. Time. Yes. Yes. I think Sally, you did that once from, from uh, Boogie Boogie, didn't you? <laughs> Too. Maybe we could do a parade of vampires, Jack, and they oh. chase you around. <gasps> I would run. I would run from a parade of vampires. Yes. 
Jack and Sally are on the Halloween time cruise, which I have never done a Jack and Sally meet and greet. They are incredibly rare characters. Typically you can find them around Halloween. In Disney World, they meet at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party every year. The lines are so wild when Jack and Sally are out. Like multiple hours to meet Jack and Sally. So I've never done it because when I am at those parties, I want to make the most of all of the other things you can do, meet the other characters. I don't want to spend hours of my upcharged party meeting Jack and Sally. And we did wait a while here for them. We waited about um, 35 minutes, 40 minutes maybe for Jack and Sally. We didn't we probably would have waited that long regardless because we came really early so we wouldn't have to wait in a long line. And what an amazing meet and greet like they are so scary and sally like she looks like a living doll because she is a living doll and jack is like the pumpkin king there in the flesh unbelievable meet and greet and it, right here on my cruise i get to walk right up to my stateroom and like go sit on my veranda now this is halloween luxury also the midship elevators are actually in these like glass walls that look out onto the like atrium lobby it's so beautiful going past the chandelier. And then once you do get past the chandelier, there's Disney characters on the wall in the elevator shaft. On each floor, there's a different set of Disney characters. Oh, my floor is Donald? Oh, everything's amazing. Rooms on Disney Cruise Line do, um, you do have like room attendants who are your hall attendants and they come in and they clean the room and they also do turn down service. And when they do turn down service, you'll sometimes find a little buddy. I think this is a seal. Is that the vibe you're getting? It's looking like a llama to me. That's not at all what I see. Squirrel? I could see squirrel. Mermaid. Definitely mermaid. That's Ariel. <laughs> and some chocolates. <laughs> All right, it's late and I've got a very big day tomorrow, so I'm probably gonna go relax for a bit in my stateroom and then hit the hay. But we have a very big day tomorrow on Disney's private island and you're not gonna believe some of the stuff we're gonna do. So I'll see you then. Good night. Day two on the Disney Dream and today is a very exciting day. Disney's private island is passed away key day. We have arrived. We arrived while we were sleeping and now um, we're sitting right next to the island. So I think it's time that we head out and go find some must-dos on Castaway Key. All right, made it off of the ship and there's the Disney Dream in all her glory. Um, so this is definitely a must-do, is getting off the ship on Disney's private island if you're sailing includes a visit to Castaway Key. Most sailings out of Florida do include a visit to Castaway Key. And um, I definitely recommend getting off because this is literally Disney's private island. The only people on the island are you coming from your ship and the entire crew that works on Castaway Key just comes right off the boat with you. So you might see like your server from dinner working at one of the barbecues. Now you can get off the boat starting around 8.30 to go to Castaway Key. It's a little later in the day because we stopped to have breakfast and slept in a little bit more than having to get off of the boat at 8.30. And we're grabbing our towels now. Don't forget to grab your towel right when you get off the ship. You cannot find towels other places in Castaway Key and it's a pretty long walk or tram ride from the ship over to all the beaches and the fun. So one very cool thing about Castaway Key is that there is a post office where you can mail uh, postcards and things and it's mail by sea. It is not always available, but definitely worth checking as you're getting off the boat. Now to get to all the fun on Castaway Key, you gotta head to this tram stop or you can take the walking path. Both are options. The tram's pretty busy today. Uh, we do have a pretty full ship, so that'll happen. Now on Castaway Key, the only must do I have for you, like specific, is to do what you wanna do. There's a ton to do. You can grab upcharged beverages, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. You can have unlimited soft serve in the sun, get in the water, check out the water slide. Grownups, you can head over to Serenity Bay, which is the adult only beach. Super, super peaceful. I'm gonna head over there in a little bit, so I'll show it to you. You won't believe how peaceful it is. Um, and that's, I mean, you just have to enjoy Castaway Key the way you wanna enjoy it. Now the beaches, especially the family beaches, can get a little crowded, so I do recommend heading to the island early to make sure you can snag a beach chair because you might have trouble finding one, especially if you need more than one. 
Now Castaway Key does have another must do to talk about, which is also back on the ship, and that is to get active. Yes, there are a lot of opportunities to get active on a Disney cruise, and you can do that your way. Here on Castaway Key, the best way to get active is with the 5K. Now this is a complimentary option. You can sign up for it on the ship, and then you get to go to Castaway Key before anybody else in the morning, run the 5K, nobody on the island at all. It is Disney's private island. Nobody's here, so you can run, run, see the island, um, just run your 5K and have a great start to your day. It's a super cool option. I hate cardio. So the sports that are more my speed are back on the ship at Goofy's Sports Center. There's mini golf, which is my jam. Uh, shuffleboard is all around the ship. There's a sports simulator in the Goofy Sports area. Tons of really cool stuff you can do on the ship to get active. Um, and then on top of that, if you just want to go to the gym, there's an amazing fitness center in Sensa's Spa that is totally awesome if you want to hop on the elliptical or get on the treadmill or lift some weights. All you can do that at the fitness center. Another way to get active on Castaway Key is with a bike rental. They're $13 per hour, or we have a transition here to our another must-do. What a segue. Our next must-do is to consider getting a port excursion. So on my cruise, we're stopping at Castaway Key or Nassau. There's port excursions at both. You can swim with dolphins at Nassau, swim with stingers on Castaway Key. You can banana boat like I made Fry Bucket do when we went on the Wish. Uh, you have to see the video. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Aren't you glad I did that? Um, we actually do have a port excursion today and that's the Castaway Key Getaway Package. It is um, kind of a package that includes a couple different things. It includes our one hour bike rental, plus all day snorkel gear rental and all day tube rental. So it's a pretty pretty great package. It's it's under $40, which is awesome. So per person, um, which is what we're gonna be gonna do. And I'm gonna take you with me on it so you can see a little bit about what that like excursion package looked like. But definitely a must do is to at least consider the port excursions, look through them. Um, you can also check out some onboard fun, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Ooh, I'm not used to one-handed biking. There's a bike trail. We decided that the bikes are very fun. Not a lot of people do them so the bike trail is empty and it's relatively flat so I don't bike a lot. I hate all cardio but this trail's easy for me so you can comfortably ride a bike on a flat surface and you'll be fine with your our bike rental. Um, I will say it is cheaper to do the things that we're doing today, the tubing, the snorkeling, and the bike rental as a package than it is to buy, I think, two of them individually or definitely all three. So I recommend looking for the package. And I was helping Cassie out with some pictures and some of my favorite DFB shirts, which you can find on the DFB store. Uh, but now, I gotta get in my true Quincy Tropical Island uniform. Next part of our package is snorkeling. And there's a snorkel lagoon which has some underwater surprises that you might not be expecting. Some of them are kind of weird. Um, and I'm gonna go try to find them and also look ridiculous in goggles. Stay tuned. Of uh, not your Darth Vader cosplay? You don't, leave my Darth Vader cosplay alone. Let me be clear, I love her Darth Vader cosplay. The sun and I are not friends. <laughs> A real stunner in goggles. I would have gotten that shot had I not fallen over.
Stop messing around, knucklehead. We got work to do. <laughs> I think uh, we can't so we use a, a ruse to get you to exercise. Oh yeah, this was this was it was a lot of work. The, card, the cardio that I have done today. I said I didn't want to run the 5K and look at what it got me. <sighs> I lost you for a really long time. I found Fitzeric. Did you? Did you get a vid? I did. Where was he? All the way, as far as you can see. <laughs> That's why it took me a hundred years to get back here. I'm glad you found him. I looked at the clock when I was halfway back and that was 10 minutes ago. So I've been swimming for like 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, on the tram again, headed for a very excited part of the island, which I think most of you, like me, are gonna be the most excited to see this part. Um, I actually did not make it over to this part of the island during my wish video, so I'm very, very excited. I will be there momentarily and I will reveal it. All right, here we are at Serenity Bay. Now, this is the adults only section of Castaway Key. Yeah, you can tell why it's so exciting to me, and I'm sure why it's exciting to you if you're over 18. Um, there is one of the barbecues here. There are three barbecues on the island, two are over in the main section. One is here. The food is a little judged up over here to be a little more exciting for grown-ups and then there also are um rentals here as well which means uh, we have the tube rental for the day and instead of getting it back over there and then lugging it over here we're able to just ride our tram out here grab our tube rentals and go do a little floating which is what we're about to do even with the full ship serenity bay is not overly crowded there aren't screaming kiddos tons of space to float in the water tons of chairs available there are hammocks available um, I think Serenity Bay is a pretty good name. All right, it's a little later on day two. I just saw Beauty and the Beast, which was so amazingly beautiful. I cried the entire time. A hundred billion, million times better than the show in Hollywood Studios. Um, Broadway level, hands down, unbelievable. You absolutely cannot miss the live entertainment on these ships. They are, they're amazing. Um, but uh, we've got some more must-dos to see. As you can probably tell, it is pirate night, um, and that brings us to another one of our must-dos. So most Disney Cruise itineraries do have a pirate night involved. Pirate night is super fun. There are pirate themed activities around the ship. You can meet pirates like Captain Jack Sparrow or Captain Hook. A lot of the guests get in on the fun and dress up as pirates as you can see here. There's a big deck party that's pirates themed and super cool and fun. You get these bandanas that say Pirates of the Caribbean on them. I highly recommend participating in Pirates Night. It is just a joy. Um, there's a very cool show and uh, even the menus at the restaurants get a little bit of a pirate twist on Pirate Night. So, lots of fun. Now, even if Pirates Night isn't happening on your cruise, it is absolutely a must-do to dress up for a party of some kind. Sometimes it's Pirate Night, sometimes there's Marvel Day at Sea, Pixar Day at Sea, um, there's Halloween, like we're gonna have tomorrow night, there's Christmas time. Absolutely a must-do to dress up for some party. If you don't do it, I'll know. I'll know. On to our next must-do, and definitely what I am doing late night tonight, and that is movie night. One of my favorite offerings on Disney Cruise Line are the movie theaters. Here on the Dream, it is the Buena Vista Theater, where they show Disney movies that are, you know, old, maybe new, maybe themed. Tonight they're showing Hocus Pocus for the Pirate Cruise, but also might still be in theaters. If a theatrical release of a movie is happening while you are on a Disney cruise ship, the cruise ship will get the theatrical release of that movie at the same time. So for instance, when Thor Love and Thunder came out, the Disney ships showed Thor Love and Thunder the night it came out, and all the Disney fans got to go watch Thor Love and Thunder together. I absolutely love getting to just like sit in an actual movie theater and watch a movie, and the fact that that's just an option to me multiple times throughout the day is absolutely amazing. Just had dinner at my second rotational dining spot, uh, Royal Palace. And now it's time for another huge must do, something you can only do on Disney Cruise Line, only cruise line in the world that you can do this one. Uh, and I'll give you a hint, it rhymes with Smireworks. It's Smireworks at Sea! As you can see, there's still some space out here right now, but I did ask a cast member where the best place to stand, and she said anywhere, but not on the right side since they'll shoot off over here. So if you're on deck 12, you can stand over there, but it's not, it's, you can't see well enough. So standing in the middle, always the best spot to watch, she said.
must do on a Disney cruise. Um, this is the only cruise line that can do fireworks at sea. Um, none of the other ones are able to. I'm really sure why, um, like what the rules are and why Disney can and others can't. Um, I assume that if they could, they would be doing so. So if you know, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious about that. Or maybe I'll do research and drop it in here. But um, it's amazing. I mean, they're obviously not going to be the same level of fireworks that you see in the parks. But they are fabulous, super fun, and they're literally firing from right around you, right off the ship. So it's very cool. This is a bonus must do. Find an empty hallway to do a private pirate jig. Ah, towel animal. What is it? It's, it's an armadillo. I think it's the scary dinosaur from Jurassic Park. It's got really cool shades. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow for our final round of must do's. She Unless there are any on the, the last on debarkation day, but I think they're all tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow. She doesn't want to add my personal DCL must do. I'm making Quincy do a lot of things she's making. She she's showing keeps all. dragging me. Like, I'll be like, I'm just going to sit. I'm just going to sit for a couple minutes on the veranda and she'll be like, okay. And then suddenly I'm at Taylor Swift karaoke. And we're going to karaoke tonight because. There are a lot of onboard activities. I've told them about the onboard activities. But they don't know about We don't have karaoke. to do them all. Why not? We don't even know what makes it crazy. Well, we're about to find out, and y'all aren't going to know anything about crazy karaoke. Well, now I have to bring them. <laughs> now they're going to have everybody. FOMO. Everyone get into your jammies. It's no longer pirate night. Yeah, we are getting into jammies. You open the door. <laughs> Day three of the cruise, and we are in Nassau, the capital of the Bahamas. Um, this is definitely another port that is worth checking out. I'm not going to check it out today because I'm all about the ship for you guys. But if you are here, of course, head off into Nassau, do some exploring, check out those port adventures. We're at bright and early though for another must do. This one we've talked a little bit about, but I'll give you a hint. It does have to do with some very adorable and very famous mice wearing some very adorable captain's outfits. I'm standing here with Penelope for another must-do, and that's get a sweet treat. Now, there are lots of included sweet treats on the ship, like the desserts at the buffets, desserts at dinner, and things like that. Of course, that unlimited soft serve, which is also on Castaway Key. There are also some not included sweet treats, like smoothies at the Smoothie Bar and Sense of Spa, the slushies, and the creme de la creme of upcharged sweet treats is here, courtesy of Vanellope Von Schmitz at Vanellope's. Vanellope's is a Wreck-It Ralph-themed shop. You can see that there are lots of little Wreck-It Ralph details, like this guy. So cute. Um, Vanellope, who we were just saying here, Vanellope's car, her race car is over there. Um, King Candy. And this is where you'll get some sweet treats that do cost a little extra, but also taste extra good. And I think I'm gonna try something out. Next up on our must-do's list, you've probably seen it in some of the videos so far, is the Aqueduct. Now this is a huge slide that takes you out over many of the top decks of the ship and even out over the ocean at one point. It looks super, super fun and I'm so excited to do it and maybe a little bit scared. The Aqueduct is absolutely a must-do on the Disney Dream and the specialty slides on the other ships are definitely must-do's. Take a look at what they are before you head on your cruise on the wish it was the Aqua Mouse, the first attraction at sea. We of course have talked about dressing up for the parties yourself as a must-do, meeting characters as a must-do, and we've seen some of those characters in pirate clothes, but today is the Halloween party night, and I just spotted one of my favorite characters in his Halloween costume, and I'm going to go see him. Looks like Donald is spending Halloween dressed as a superhero. Oh my gosh, he's so super. I love him. I'll be right here sitting in the sun if you need me. And don't worry, I am wearing a long sleeve swimsuit and sunblock. <sighs> Another must do on a Disney ship is to at least consider a splurge to treat yourself. The best ways to do this are with salon and spa treatments or with adults only expensive dining. Uh, Remy and Paolo are the two options on this ship. 
both amazing. Remy is going to be a more chef-focused, tasting menu-focused French cuisine restaurant, whereas Paolo is a very fancy, full-portioned restaurant with brunch and dinner offerings with Italian cuisine. There's also the spa. Since this spa has a beautiful rainforest room, the chill spa for teens, and tons of treatments, massages, facials, cryotherapy, acupuncture, anything you can want from a spa. And you can even splurge on the little ones with the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique location that is available on, do on board where kiddos can get a princess or pirate makeover. Perfect for pirate night. I saw a lot of little pirates looking very cute. Another must do is to check out the age specific parts of the ship. And that's for kids, teens, tweens, adults, everybody. There's a place for everyone. So on some of the topmost decks of the ship is Currents Bar, Cove Cafe, and Quiet Cove, which is the adults only pool area featuring um, a bar that's like basically in a pool, uh, several pools, lots of plush comfy lounges and things like that. Uh, definitely where my favorite pool is. And Cove Cafe, a very nice coffee shop geared towards adults only, a great place to come and relax. Uh, that is an additional fee for the coffee there, but it was delicious. Other pools include Nemo's Reef, which is intended for little toddlers and smaller folks, plus the main deck pools and more around the ship. Other adult-only areas include Remy and Paolo, the adult-only dining experiences that are available for an additional fee, plus the District, which is the nightlife location for adults here on the ship. Now during the day, the District is open to families, but all of the bars in the District do become adult-only at night, including District Lounge, Pub 687, Pink Wine and Champagne Bar, Skyline, and Evolution, with some very fun 18 and older activities. When it comes to age-exclusive parts of the ship for younger folks, the 3-12 to 12 year olds have access to Disney's Oceaneer Club and Oceaneer Lab. The Oceaneer Club has Andy's Room, Disney Infinity Game Room, Pixie Hollow, and the Star Wars Millennium Falcon. Uh, the lab has the animator studio, craft studio, media room, playmation, um, and the wheelhouse, and both of those do offer character experiences and group activities as well. Babies can be dropped off at the It's a Small World Nursery if you need nursery services. Tweens and teens have access to Edge, which is 11 to 14 year olds, and then 14 to 17 year olds have access to Vibe. Both of these spaces have a lot of activities that are geared towards those age groups, video games, movie nights, dance parties, and things like that. There's even an 1820 club, which is for people 18 to 20, and you'll notice some activities in your navigator that are geared towards those age groups. Hi! I'm wearing you on my shirt basically. <laughs> you guys look amazing. Update the Sanderson sisters are very cute. It's Clarabelle, Minnie, and Daisy dressed as the Sanderson sisters. Daisy is Sarah, Minnie is Winifred, of course, Minnie is Winnie, and Clarabelle is Mary. And um, Daisy did like the fact that my shirt matched hers. just finished animators palette which means I have now had all three of my rotational dinners I think my ranking would have to go animators palette enchanted garden and then royal palace um, I enjoyed all of them the food was good the options were various and I think would be pleasing to most everybody I just think animators palette had food that was just a touch better and that show benefit so definitely loved animators palette the best which completes our rotational dining must do at last 11 p.m. on the final night so I know what you're thinking what is there possibly to do well, we are going to silent disco, but also, obviously you'd have to lounge in your cruise robe and order room service. We snagged this nice cheese plate from room service, which is mostly complimentary. There are a few upcharge items, just like any of the menus. Uh, the really cool thing they have on the room service menus is Mickey bars. Uh, Disney Cruise Line does offer 24 hour room service. So if you wanna eat a Mickey bar at 3 a.m. on your veranda, you do you. That's a, all of our must-dos, I believe. We have to find out if Cassie is gonna be able to drag me to the uh, silent disco. We're going, buckle up. Yeah, it sounds like we're going. <laughs> Just keep your arms, legs, hands, and whatever else is attached to your body inside the vehicle at all times.
Disney Cruises, head over to allears.net to see our full website section on Disney Cruise Line. And now go watch my review of the brand new Disney ship, the Disney Wish. See you there.